What's the matter? We've been on the road for two days, and now you stop and we're almost in sight of Jerusalem? The sun's already hot, and if we don't get moving, we won't sell our goods in the market. Passover only comes once a year. Now, come on. life. Oh, I never can find a comfortable inn. And I must go as far as Damascus to find linen that doesn't tear. Such hard work. Oh, such a long road to travel. But what am I going to all this trouble for? To give my goods as a present for no more than two coins to the first... <laughs> I'm always afraid for Jesus when he goes to Jerusalem. It's dangerous. Many people are against him there. Many love him, too. Ah, now there's an idea. Come along. Bye, Philip. See you in Jerusalem. Who's sitting on my cart? I could have sworn there was somebody there. Thank you. Goodbye, my good man. Huh. Hey, where are you going? Wait for me! That's a chauffeur. It means that soon they'll open the gates of Jerusalem. a jug. But how can we meet him with all these people? It's not going to be easy. He'll take us to the house where we'll eat the Passover dinner. Let a poor man pass. A poor man? <laughs> We're all poor here. But you are Barnabas, the merchant. <laughs> if you are poor, what am I? 
Even if you're poor, old man, you could be richer than me. You don't have to worry about being robbed like I do. Stand aside. Uh, give me something at least. Oh, if I gave something to all the people who asked me, now I would be begging you. Watch out. Best pottery jars, every one of our guests. Oh, lovely lady, hidden from our eyes. May I interest you in this exquisite cloth from Sidon? Only ten shekels a length. You're a swindler. I'll give you half the price. Every piece a real bargain. I wonder how much they cost. Boy, oh. Oh. aren't here to go shopping. I'll give you five shekels. Oh, woman, you want to ruin me? On feast days, the merchants are masters of Jerusalem. But it's very precious cloth. It's worth twelve at least. I'll give you six and be satisfied. Well, 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 let's say seven and I'll finish it. How shall we find that man? There! Hey, sorry! Uh, there's the jug! It's a woman carrying it. Well, we'll just have to keep on looking. <laughs> Look, that's him. I think you're right, John. Let's follow him. I wish I knew. Look, he stopped. So that's the house. Come on, let's go. Who are you and what do you want? Jesus sent us. He'll be here soon. He wants to eat the Passover dinner in your house. That's good news. Miriam, Jesus is coming to eat the Passover dinner at our house. Oh, joy. Jesus is coming to our house? My dear man, why didn't he tell us before? This is a blessing for our house. We must make him welcome. We must prepare the room. Your dog is very playful. Yes, his name is Atchis. And what is your name? Mark, and who are you? My name is John, and these are my friends. There's a good boy, Atchis. You're Jesus' disciples, aren't you? Yes, you guessed it. When he comes here, will I be able to see him? Of course you will. He's coming here for you, too. Good dog. Hey! Sorry, but it isn't like men who have curly hair. Come. Everything is ready. Go to the market and buy a lovely basket of dates. May I interest you in this exquisite cloth? Only ten shekels a length. Hey, what's got into you? Leave me alone. Get away. Beast! Patches, what are you doing? Leave that man alone. That's a dangerous animal. Teach him how to behave, boy. Your hair isn't even curly.
add some fresh fruit from Galilee. The first time our people celebrated Passover was many, many years ago. We were the Pharaoh's prisoners in Egypt. The Lord said if the Pharaoh did not liberate the people of Israel, he would punish them with terrible plagues. What kind of plagues? You mean people got sick? Certainly. He sent nine plagues to Egypt, but the tenth was the worst. And which one was it? He commanded Moses to make the Israelites sacrifice a lamb. You'll eat it with your family, he said and you'll put some of its blood on the door of your house. That night, God passed as a terrible windstorm on all the towns and all the houses of Egypt, and he made all the firstborn sons die, men or animals, and even the Pharaoh's son. And did they all die? Now, one moment, boy. God spared the houses marked with the blood of the lamb, and so, the very frightened Pharaoh of Egypt told the people of Israel, go away. Then Moses led them to the promised land. Judas! Judas, over here! We should prepare the matter with great caution. He has got too many followers now. In Capernaum, he restored a paralytic to health, and the crowd acclaimed him. In Jericho, he restored the sight of two blind people in front of many people. On the lake of Genesaret, he doubled breads and fish and fed an immense crowd. In Bethsaida, in Cana, in Samaria, everywhere he goes, he performs miracles. He speaks, and the crowd goes mad for him. And last Saturday, when he arrived at Jerusalem's gate, people received him in the town as a victor, as the Messiah. And when we tried to lay hands on him, we ran the risk of a rebellion. We can't afford to fail anymore. <clears throat> if you want to arrest Jesus, I will give him to you. How will you do it? I know where he's spending the night, and he'll be alone. Well, let's prepare some soldiers. How much is my reward? The price of a slave, Judas. That's not much. You'll get uh, 30 pieces of silver, Judas, and our gratitude. Do you see that man? He's Jesus of Nazareth, the one they call the Messiah. But how you do you know? Your uncle Asaph was actually present when Jesus performed a miracle. In Capernaum, he brought the daughter of his friend Jairus back to life. She was dead, but he took her hand and said, get up. And she got up as if nothing had happened. Lord, bless my son. You have announced the kingdom of God, but what you haven't told us is when it will come. God's kingdom doesn't come at the sound of angels' trumpets. And nobody will say, here it is, or there it is, because God's kingdom is among you. Lord, I've traveled all over the world, Syria, Greece, Egypt. But I've never crossed the kingdom of God. Where is it, huh? Maybe I could sell my goods there. Your wealth has made your eyes blind and your heart poor, Barnabas. What will be the use of all the gold you hide under the floor of your house when worms will devour your body? Huh? What does my gold have to do with the kingdom of God? Help poor people. Give your money as a present to those who ask for it, and in doing so, you'll find the kingdom of God. Now I must go. I must eat the Passover dinner with my friends. Do the same. Go and eat the Passover dinner with those who love you.
Master, everything is ready. Welcome to my house, Jesus. May peace be with you, Joachim. You honor us, Lord. Get away! Get this dog away from me! Atchis, stop that! My dog doesn't like that man, Jesus. I've greatly desired eating this Passover dinner with you before my hour arrives. Master, what are you doing? But Lord, I can't allow you to wash my feet. If I don't wash your feet, you can have no share with me. We are your servants, Lord, but if you insist. No servant is greater than his master, nor messenger is greater than that one who sent him. Thomas. Master, me too? Everyone. I'll wash the feet of all of you. One of you. One who's eating with me is going to betray me. Who? 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 Ask him. Who is he speaking about? Who is he? It would have been better for him if he had not been born. But who wants to betray him? I know. Is it me, Lord? What you're going to do, do quickly. I shall be with you only a little longer. And where I am going, you cannot come. Love one another, just as I have loved you. It is by your love for one another that everyone will recognize you as my disciples. Take it and eat. This is my body. Drink from this, all of you. For this is my blood of the covenant, poured out for many. No one can have greater love than to lay down his life for his friends. I chose you, and I commissioned you to go out and to bear fruit, fruit that will last. If the world hates you, you must realize that before it hated you, it hated me and the father who sent me. He who is going to kill me thinks that he honors God in so doing. I have told you all this so that you may not fall away. You will be sorrowful, but your sorrow will turn to joy. I'm now leaving the world and going back to my father. But be sure, the father will give you anything you ask him in my name. Ask, and you shall receive, and so your joy will be complete. Well, now you have spoken clearly, without parables. Now we know that you see everything. We know that you have come from God. Do you believe, John? Do you believe, friends? We believe, Jesus. If you believe and love, it doesn't matter what those hating you are going to do against you. You'll be scattered, 
They will expel you from the synagogues. You'll suffer tribulation. But believe firmly in me, because I have won the world, and you shall find peace in me. Father, I'm coming to you. Cannot thank you enough, Jesus, for you have blessed our house. I thank you. Stay got on. Oh, was it generous with you? It was extremely generous. But you are Barnabas, the merchant. What happened to you? Did someone rob you? I met Jesus. This morning I told you that you are a real rich man. Now we are both rich. I gave to the poor all I possessed. The Gospels narrate the events that happened in Jerusalem during the Feast of the Passover in the year 33 AD, or maybe 30 AD. According to the Hebrew tradition, a lamb had to be sacrificed and eaten on the eve of the Passover, on the day of unleavened bread. That year, although he knew that his opponents were looking for him in order to kill him, Jesus decided to celebrate the Passover supper in Jerusalem with the Twelve. That is, those disciples he had first chosen as his assistants, witnesses, and friends, the apostles. That night, while they were sitting around the table, Jesus knew that one of the twelve, Judas Iscariot, had betrayed him. He had already been paid 30 pieces of silver to grant his opponents the possibility of arresting him during the night to avoid clamor and to lead him to his death in the following days. For three years, Jesus had been announcing his kingdom to the people of Palestine and he knew that his mission was coming to an end. Before going back to the Father, he wanted to give his disciples a concrete sign of his presence out of his love for them and for all mankind. And for the first time in the world's history, he changed bread and wine into tangible signs of his presence. He took bread, and when he had said the blessing, he broke it and gave it to them. Take it and eat it, he said, this is my body. Do this in remembrance of me. Then he took a cup of wine and gave it to them, saying, Drink from this, all of you, for this is my blood, the blood of the new covenant poured out for you. After only a few weeks, moved by the Holy Spirit they had received at Pentecost, the apostles started to repeat the sign made by Jesus at the Last Supper, because they were convinced that bread and wine shared in remembrance of him were Jesus' body and blood, that is, he himself really present among them. The Acts of the Apostles report that the early Christian community was faithful to the teachings of the Apostles and to the daily breaking of bread. All this became liturgy, the celebration of the Eucharist, widespread in the early Christian community and in the church until now. Eucharist is a Greek word still in use in our language, meaning thanksgiving, agape, in the tradition of the early Christians. But Eucharist is not only remembrance, thanksgiving, Christians regard it as food for the soul, the bearer of spiritual health, of grace, strength, and holiness. It is the means through which Jesus lives in those who believe in him. Today, we still eat that bread and drink that wine of which, that Passover of long ago in Jerusalem, Jesus had said, this is my body, this is my blood, and whoever eats it remains in me and I in him.
search for him, and in the silence of my soul, I'll wait for.